some of you may remember that last time I spoke, I mentioned that the third chapter in the Bible introduced Satan, sin, death, sorrow, tears. But the third last chapter of the Bible said goodbye to all of them. When you go beyond that, it says, God will wipe every tear from their eyes and there'll be no more death, no more mourning, no more sorrow, no more pain. What a hope. But what about the chapters in between, the bulk of the Bible? My dear friends, you know the answer. It's about trouble and deliverance. There are whole books about trouble, like Job and Lamentations. That's a funeral book. And then there's Ecclesiastes. And the last section of all the Gospels is very, very full of trouble, full of sadness. So how should we behave? How should we react in a world of trouble? No one can escape it. Let me read you some verses from Lamentations chapter 3. Remember, this is a funeral book. Listen, I'm reading from chapter 3. This I recall to my mind, and therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. Though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. You understand I'm reading from the third chapter a little more. He does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee, and thou didst say, Fear not. You know, the admonition not to fear, fear not, is the most used admonition in the whole Bible. Not be good, not be smart, not say your prayers, but don't fear. When you read the opening of the book of Joshua in the first chapter and the fifth verse, the Lord says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. But the Hebrew reads like this, I will never, never leave you or forsake you. So how do we behave in trouble? We believe that we are loved. We believe that there's someone who cares for us, who has all power. Remember the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Even if you go through the shadow of death, it's only a shadow, and you're not alone. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. But the Bible is full of trouble and full of stories of deliverance. Nor and his family are safe from the flood. Lot is delivered from the enemies that captured him, delivered by Abraham. Jacob is saved from Esau's army that has come out to kill him. The Bible is full of trouble. New Testament as well as old. But it's full of deliverances. Peter is delivered from prison. Paul is delivered from shipwreck. And get this, the greatest deliverance of all in the Bible. Christ is delivered from the grave. That's a promise. You and I are going there, unless Jesus comes very soon. But the fact that he rose, he's the first fruits of them that sleep. So how do we behave? We believe in the love of God. We believe in the providence of God. We believe in the sovereignty of God. When you believe in the sovereignty of God, the certainty of uncertainty will not trouble you any further. Read the last 10 or 12 verses of Romans 8. That's all about the sovereignty of God. But now note this, friend. You may not have heard this before. Perhaps the greatest protection apart from believing in the love of God, is the practice of gratitude. Ingratitude is the worst sin in the world. It's worse than murder. 
It's worse than adultery. It's worse than thieving. Count your many blessings. Count them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Can you see? Thank God. Can you hear? Thank God. Can you digest and walk and talk? Thank God. But you may have lost something. Well, thank God for what's left. When I lost a beautiful wife after 18 years, seven years of cancer, vomiting 20 to 40 times a day, a friend wrote me and he said very wisely, stop your snivelling and thank God for the years you had her. So my friends, gratitude is the remedy in trouble. Count your many blessings. Remember what God has done. Be glad there are hospitals. Thank God if you're not in one. Thank God for all that you have. Even when you lose things, thank God for what is left. But now I want to read you one closing passage because without this you'll forget everything else I've said. I'm going to quote from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul says, therefore, I'll glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For when am I weak, when I am weak, then am I strong. Dear friends, I confess, I often feel very weak indeed. But I love this statement. When I am weak, then I am strong. That's your remedy for trouble. God bless you.